welcome to Raw and Prophetic with your host, Apostle Katrina Garrett. Raw and Prophetic is where we are real, we are anointed, we are women, and we are prophetic. On this podcast, you will be encouraged through the Word of God to step in your purpose-driven assignment from the Lord and to be inspired and encouraged to be all that God has called you to be. So, welcome to our podcast. Here is your host, Apostle Katrina Garrett. Welcome, welcome, welcome to Raw and Prophetic. Okay, so it's been a minute. <laughs> <laughs> it's all right. It's been a minute. It's been a minute, y'all. I've been trying to really, I've been struggling trying to get back in the swing of doing um, ministry and everything. And I know y'all probably say she had this on the other day. And I, you know what? These are my PJs. I'm sorry, y'all, but I'm coming to you. <laughs> In my PJs, cause it's late. <laughs> it's late in the right evangelist. Yeah, absolutely. But I'm so excited. I just want to say welcome to Raw and Prophetic, where we are real anointed women and prophetic. So this podcast, sometimes we're gonna flow prophetically, you know, whatever the Spirit of the Lord is uttering us to do. And then sometimes we're just gonna be real, mm-hmm. and we're just gonna have some anointed women to come on and share some kingdom principles to help you, you know, just grow and mature in the Lord. So tonight we have a real special guest, longtime friend, my sis, evangelist Natasha Jones. How you doing on tonight? I am blessed, blessed, <laughs> blessed, blessed. Glad to be here and just, you know, thankful to the Lord yes. for still having the right, being our right mind at the, in these times, you know, in these times, but to God be the glory. Amen. Yes, to God be the glory. Yes. I see them cute black and red, black, red curves behind you. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm going to have to come and see that new house, girl. Yes. But anyway, yes. so Natasha, she's a, both of us are natives from, from Panama City, Florida, and we both have relocated. She is now in a, Georgia on the outside of Atlanta. And, and uh, of course, I'm here in Jacksonville, so um, we're going to have to start soon, soon get together, and uh, she's going to come see me, though, first. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> it's not a problem. But tonight, we're going to talk about ministry and family and ministry and ways that we can, you know, just be a, a blessing to our family. Because you got to understand, ministry is not just for people on the outside. Mm-hmm. We have to minister within our family. And so um, tell us, Evangelist, some things that that, that you find that's really, really uh, powerful to, as a tool. And what is it like to minister to your family? You know, the way we live, the way we act, and all of those things. Um, I, I it's, it's a serious, it's a very serious, um, it's a grave responsibility um mm-hmm. that once we um we have come into 
uh, you know, um, kingdom living or and a righteous living to mm -hmm. be that example for those that have not, you know, uh, arrived or are in process or, you know, still are still doing their thing because, you know, me personally, as as a as, you know, mother or cousin or, you know, uh, the, the position I have in my family, as I see my family still in their ways, it it pains me, but I don't um I'm I'm grateful that I'm out I'm out now I've come out now and I can be that example so I've I've made mistakes because I have wanted them to come over you know when I came mm -hmm. over and I wanted them to experience you know the life living a li Christian life and a free life of freedom free from drugs free from fornication and adultery and those type things just to, you know just to have a freedom mind not to be um, so caught up in the world ways and things going on. And I, and so I, you know, preached to him and was, um, and, you know, and didn't have the, the love that I should have had or, or mm -hmm. even just listening, you know, just listening sometime because I wasn't always saved. I have to remember. And I, you know, in the beginning, I forgot, I forgot that I was, I was just there. I was with him you know, hanging, slanging, whatever else, you know, that I think I was big and bad enough to do. But it, it is very important to have, you know, empathy, to empathize with where they are. And, and yes. when you don't have the supernatural to to combat what you're dealing with, you're going to um, you're going to want more lean towards more things that the world do drugs and sex and you know, music and, and so forth. So you have to be compassionate. You do have to just really, it's a lot of praying and being listening and being there for them and let them come to you because they'll come to you when they get that, when they get to a point of desperation in their life, they'll come and you'll be ready yeah. to listen and you'll be ready to, you know. Yeah. yeah. To be there for them. Love. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 It's important that we learn how to, how to minister Yes. Yeah. And you know, and you and when you think it, they're not watching, they're watching. Yes. You know what I mean? And it's like I too, I didn't raise my children at, in the church at first. I was out there in the world doing all sorts of things. And um, and even with that, I'm dealing with sons that's in prison. I got a son in prison now. Um, and so let me ask you a question. How do you feel about some ministers that might have uh, family members or children in in prison, you know, people expect you to walk in a shame, you know, because they feel like, well, if you can't minister to your own child, how can you minister to somebody else? But at the end of the day, people got to understand that everybody but got a choice. And people choose it what they do. You know, even when you minister to on the out of, on the outside of your family, you know, you still got people who go make a choice. And so um, you, you've seen me walk through that, you know, and, mm -hmm. and dealing with our children out there, you know, doing things that that's not of the, not, not of God. Um, so tell us a little bit about how, how do you feel about when you have a mother that might be experiencing um, similar things like what I've gone through or what you've gone through and the church make them feel like they did something wrong or they didn't they not save enough you know tell us a little bit about how a mother should feel about you know dealing with her children that might be in the streets or they might be in jail whatever the case you know as they grew up as adults they need to be sympathetic to it that might not be your situation but you have a situation but if that's that parent's situation because a child is on your heart and no whether you did it, you didn't raise them right, whether you were saved and you didn't raise them right, or if you was not saved, if you now come to the realization, your, your, your error in raising them and you have corrected those ways, you just pray. Uh, and, and there are going to be some ministers, there are going to be church people that fear you didn't do the right thing or not doing the right thing or for, however. And, and for the most part, I do think that a lot of the parents did not do the right thing did not um you know whether they, they didn't might not have the tools 
and they didn't right. raise their child right. And I and I get that. And so all you have to do is um come you got to what when you find yourself um seeing where you err, change that. And there and God can change it. And I don't care how long you didn't you didn't raise them right, but if you change your tone towards them, your love towards them, they could be in jail and you can go in to see them. But you your ultimate goal is to to redeem them back. Forget about how what you didn't do, because I didn't always, and I was saved when I raised mine, but I didn't do the right things with them. I had them in church, but I didn't, I, you know, I now I see a lot of things where when they come to me, instead of being so hard, I, I at a young age, I should have listened. I, I said, oh, no, you ain't hanging with that with you. That they ain't no good. And, you you know, explain to them why that they're not going to hang with them. And why? Because if you're going to hang with them, then you may end up, you know, so having a love, love and tone. I, I do see mistakes, but I I think we should love those parents that have those children that are wayward. And some have children that wayward and they taught them right. So we can't <laughs> judge and it doesn't matter how they, you know, came to that. Let's figure out now how to get them out of that. Let's be, it, it takes a community. It takes a, a village to raise a child. And, and that's, that's what we focus. missing. We missing that's what we're that missing now. That. You right. Yes. Right. We're so busy. We're so busy degrading one another. Because yes. Like you said, you know, <clears throat> um, one thing about, as you know, you know me for quite some time, I kept on preaching, kept doing what the Lord called me to do. You know, it was times I was coming home from preaching revivals and things like that, giving phone calls. One of my sons was locked up. And that was one of the things the enemy would try to use mm -hmm. to make you feel like you're not qualified. Yes. You know, and it's like this. Every parent raised their child with the best of the knowledge that they have. Yes. Nobody is given a book. And even if you are given a book, your experience, like you just said earlier, everybody's experience is different. Yes. And like you said, you have some parents that made a mistake and their child ended up wrong. But you have some parents that live by the word, walk by the word, walk with Christ, did everything, raised their children, loved their children, and their children still made that choice. Yeah, that's right. They still made a choice. Sometimes some children that uh, are, are, are young adults, I'll say, you know, um, I remember I was listening to a, a pastor years ago. They raised their they son up in the church and everything. But. And he was shown love by his mom and daddy. He was shown love by his church. But his problem was he wanted to be accepted by the world. Mm -hmm. He felt like because he was so different from his friends that wasn't in church, he wanted to be a part of that. Right. And they rejected him because he was a pastor's kid. So because they rejected him, he started doing what they was doing so they can accept him. Yes. And, you know, and praise God, he ended up, you know, getting on drugs real bad. And uh, the Lord brought him back out of it. He got back out of it. He, he got out of it. And he started back, you know, living for the Lord, living for Jesus. And now he passed the church. So it mm -hmm. doesn't necessarily mean that if you got family members that's not saved or family members that's not living according to the word, it don't mean you're not, you're not living for Christ. Right. It doesn't mean that you're not doing the right thing. Mm -mm. Because if we can raise our children. We can, we can be married, whatever. At the end of the day. They have to, everybody has to make their own choice. Amen. Amen. And so, um, so tell us a little bit, tell us a little bit about some things that, that we should do as wives or mothers, you know, what ways can we do besides we just, besides praying that we can, that we can draw our family to Christ? Um, I, I, I think, you know, just, communication um like i you know i i, I believe in family dinner sitting down at the dinner table all together yes, that's good talking to your children that's good and let them be comfortable to to talk mm -hmm. don't cut them off when they well you know i had a bad day people's picking at me and i got picking at you and you and you you getting mad about that what you what you what's wrong with you 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 need a man you know listen to the children I'm I am guilty about that. I'm what you crying for? Cause they hit you. You need to hit them back. You know. I mean, 
because you would have hit them back with when you came up, but they are <laughs> these are new breed that sulfur. Sometimes you don't know what children be going through, and you, and you got to listen. Oh my god, listen, mm -hmm. listen, listen. And I I know that they, you know, that's why they don't want to tell a lot of times the parents what they're going through, even if just say you got a child that's a boy, mm -hmm. he feeling like you're a girl, and you know, yeah. you so he want to come tell you that and you know you're not finna. I wouldn't have wanted to hear that. But I mean, when you listen, because whatever reason, the enemy, if he can't get you, he will, you know, um, he'll try to get the children. And you, so if you listen, you know what to pray for. Mm -hmm. He might do feel like that. It's, we know there's a spirit. He might not know, but just listening and, and giving them the, what the words say. You always tell them what the words say. And the Bible yeah. tell us about te uh, to how we're supposed to write it on the tablet of their heart, write it on their eyelid, talk about it when they wake up, talk about when they go to mm -hmm. sleep. You talk about how good God is. You talk about who is the provider of this house. Yes, you got mm -hmm. mom and dad, but God is our source. You tell them what the words say about, you know, our lives in every right. area of our lives and put that in them. And when they, oh, the words that they want the part, not that they won't, may not get in some things, but they have something in them that they remember that my mom said that the Lord, he don't leave you or he don't forsake you. So wherever they mm -hmm. go, where even you can't get them, they don't know how to call on the Lord. Because mm -hmm. the, we on the other end calling on the Lord because we don't know where they at or what they into or what's going on with them. And so when they get in their little situations, they know how to call on the Lord. That's right. And the Lord can get them back to you, give you insight, give you wisdom, or they'll just call you and tell you where they at, you That's know, right. where they've been doing. So mm -hmm. listen and make people feel comfortable and let them know that, you know, um, because they made this mistake, it's not the end of the world. God still mm -hmm. loves them. You still love them. And there's nothing they can do that That's will right. turn you against them. Nothing. That's to right. Make them feel comfortable. Yes. Yeah. So I think, you know, communication and family family times and talking telling them about what the word says mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, i believe them about the word yes i believe that and you know and, and another thing too you know we like you said i like what you said wisdom we we have to pray for wisdom and ask god for yes. his wisdom and discernment for the best way for us to be able to balance out um ministry and leadership and ministry with family mm. especially those who are in leadership you know, <clears throat> you're in leadership and ministry. You your first ministry is at home. At home. Your first ministry, like with, even with my husband. Yes. My husband is my first ministry. My children, you know, and, and and I minister to my children in different ways. You know, sometimes they be talking about certain things that be going on in the world. And I just listen. I don't always throw scripture at them and Bible verses at them, you know, and telling them this. I listen to them. You know, and then I go in the prayer. Like you said, I like what you said earlier. Sometimes we just got to listen to them because then we listen to them and let them talk and they're expressing themselves about what they're doing or what they got going on. Mm -hmm. Then we'll know how to pray. Yes. <clears throat> Amen. We'll know how to pray because when we begin to pray, then the anointing that's in us will stir up. And as the anointing is staring up in us, the anointing that's in us which is which, which the anointed also refers as a weight. Yes. The weight of God, the weight of his spirit. When it's resting upon us, it will begin to start destroying the yokes. Amen. Of bondage that's upon our family, upon our children. Yes. Because sometimes you could go around them and not have to say anything. Anything. No. Amen. And that and that and that if that if if you if we go on and pray about it. God dealing with us and he's showing us how to be wise. Yes. Because this is the season that we need to walk in more wisdom. Wisdom. Slow to speak. Yes. Quick to hear. Yes. 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 Slow oh to speak. Oh, my God. No. <clears throat> I love when you said that. Yes. And I like when you said this, too. Sitting at the dinner table. Yes. You know, and, and every year we would come around the table and we would all get together either at my house, my mom's house, whomever. And we would get together. We would break bread together. Yeah. <clears throat> and we would talk and listen to them talk and all those things. And so that's important, you know. Very. Um, because, you know, sitting there and, and, and just spending time, that quality time, you know, showing them that we love them. Showing them yes. that we're praying for them. Yes. You know. And so I like what you said that we definitely 
have to ask God for wisdom because, you know, the Bible tells us that, <clears throat> that, you know, the beginning of wisdom is to fear the Lord. Yes. And so by us fearing the Lord, it, 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 that's the beginning of us walking in wisdom because we fear God. We fear the Lord more. We're not caught up in religion. We're not caught up in the church bylaws. You understand? Because it's mm -hmm. not about, because see, the church people are the worst ones toward family. And it's so sad because so many people that might be dealing with a child that's on drugs or dealing with a child that's battling with their sexuality or dealing with those things, they are so uncomfortable and don't even want to bring it to the church because nope. they feel like the church is going to criticize them or say, well, you was a bad parent. You weren't holy enough, you know? Yes. And so tell us about that. You know, like, you know, what, how do you feel the church should respond to things like this? L I, listen, I mean, you know, they'd be so quick to really, especially if they, their children doing right, you know, or, or they don't, they don't, they're not, they, don't, they haven't dealt with this, you know what I'm saying? So yeah. they're going to tell you, uh, uh, of course, probably how they did it or what you should do. What you should do is whoop his butt or you need to get him in the house. You need to be in the house at this certain time and you do all this kind of stuff, you know, and, and, and we do have rules and there are, you know, I do, you know, believe in discipline and rules, but there, there's some, you can give them all the rules and then, and they still um acting out i mean mm -hmm. some things just fasting and praying and asking god what what because we don't know sometimes children you know what they didn't delve in what they have seen who have touched mm -hmm. them what have happened and i think that's why i just keep saying i mm -hmm. you know lord keep impressing to listen that's a, a pastor that come to your house you know and and like you said a lot of time i they don't they don't want to tell somebody that's always got a word or got something to say before they can even listen and have any compassion because right. these children, these children, it's a spirit of rebellion on these children. It's a different mm -hmm. age. It's a different ch children because of so much they, that they are exposed to. We wasn't exposed to all this stuff. So of course we didn't have to deal with a lot of stuff they are dealing with. These children are dealing with stuff that they should not even be dealing with. So we have got to listen and you've got mm -hmm. to show them love. And sometimes you might can't even say nothing but give them a hug. So, I mean, you know, because I'm, of course, my children are grown, but even just listen to some of the stuff my grandchildren be going through, I'm just mm -hmm. like, what in the, y'all too, what y'all little, what is y'all mad about? Like, I mean, but it's a spirit, it's spirits, it's yes. spirits. And we yeah. got to pray against those spirits. That's why mm -hmm. when we listen, we hear rebellion. Mm -hmm. You know, we hear, um, these these uh perverted spirits and lust and lesbian spirits and homosexual spirits that's what we're fighting against we're not fighting against our children we're not locking them down we're not trying to you know um be this, be this heroic parent or the best parent it's it like you said it don't come with a manual it's this is just like a case by case situation and when these things come upon you like lord what you know show me what where did i go wrong what happened did something you know I'm, Something mm -hmm. happened to them, and a lot of times you don't you don't know who you having children by, so you don't know what kind of spirits they dealing with, ancestry or whatever going on. So that's all up in there. <laughs> so, and now you now <laughs> if you do finally get a little history, the mama telling you, oh yeah, he was like that, she was like that, she used to you know get in trouble, used to do this and that the other. You don't know until mm -hmm. until later on, especially because mm -hmm. you a lot of times we having children, we ain't married. We don't mm -hmm. know the background. We don't know their parents. We don't know nothing. And that's why it's important to get married. Yes, very. And important. that's why it's important now because now I know now I understand why. See, back in my time, I do too. I didn't think about that. I didn't either. You no, know I'm saying I, regret I didn't think about. I didn't think about that. And so d during my time, I'm out there, you know, running around with this person, that person getting pregnant. And now I understand. That's right. Understand? And let me tell you something. Them traits be on them kids. They ain't got never even meet the baby daddy because that my my first son was like that. When he met his dad for the first time in thirty some years, wow. that joker was just like his dad. That's how I found that. that that's his daddy because that that's boy right. just like that. I mean, <laughs> it's so <laughs> yeah, and, and all like that time you didn't know. Come yeah, come to find out, they like jazz. My son like jazz. Everything. Amen. Like you said, it's important because even though my son never met his biological father until he was 30 something years old, he had his traits. Right. Okay. He had his traits. So that's, that's a valuable thing you said. 
And then he also it, probably it, displayed it, some interview, anger. Interview yeah. the man you're going to marry. I'm going to say it like that. You, interview you the right. man you're going to do a background check. Amen. Yeah. If he got crazy people in his family, you know, just be mindful. The U.S. right. You know, because I'm not saying not marry him because you love him, but be mindful. Because if he got people in his family that dealing with mental illnesses or dealing with anything, drugs, alcohol, drugs, addictions, then you go ahead and you start praying for your unborn child. Amen. Because you see this and you know. Hedge it but off. But see, we didn't have that wisdom. Amen. Natasha. We didn't have that wisdom coming no. up. Mm -mm. So when we did it, we just got pregnant by anything. That's right. And, and then we thought of what we're dealing with now, now. Is from that result. See, the people don't understand that's consequences to sin. Yes, ma'am. You, you gotta know, deal you with it. You yes, you do. So that's why I, that's why I have to, I had to go back. You know, I was thinking about the day, um, Latasha. I was thinking, I was thanking God today, really. Because <clears throat> one of the generational curses in my family that's being broken is my sons. All my sons are raising their children. Thank you, Jesus. Yes. And I thank God for that. Yes. You know, his baby mama, they ain't married, but they still together. Amen. Now, that's a whole nother story right there. Right. And I don't talk to them about getting married. They've been together 10 years. Wow. And they got two children. But my son, DeAndre, he married. But even DeAndre that has children outside his marriage that he had before he got married, him and his wife and the mothers of his children are all raising the children together. Praise God. <clears throat> sometimes he have them, sometimes they have them, and they all neutral, they get along, they invite each other. I mean, you know, the thing that really blessed me, I'm going to say this, I was talking to my son the other day, and he said that one of his baby mothers was having a, 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 a graduation or something, and his wife went. She yes. went. They Amen. all get along like friends. Amen. And those children are growing up in a home of love. Love, Yes. They're not Absolutely. growing up in that separation because even like you said, sometimes even being in a church, you got to be careful because you can't speak against the daddy, right? And the daddy family, and that's something that I've never done. Me neither. With my right. children, right. I never spoke against my children's father, family, or anything like that. Not in their presence, right? Now, I might that's have said right. It, you know, to somebody else, but right. I never let them hear that. No, because it's important that they understand. Most of these children are in a position like they are for one reason. Lack of love is something that happened in their life that they don't feel loved. Yes. So I like when you said that when you was talking about how, you know, we got to have wisdom. Yes. You know, because, you know, the word of God tells us, <clears throat> I'm going to read this in, uh, in uh, Psalms 49 and 3. It says, my mouth shall speak wisdom. Yes. And the meditation of my heart should give understanding. Jesus. So, when, you know, so so when we speak wisdom, wisdom. Mm -hmm. then a lot of times when our kids doing things they not doing and out, and out of our mouth come that wisdom, they'll start to get an understanding. They might not receive it then, but when they by their step, they're going to think about what you said. Right. That's right. Because you said something wise. Yes. And God is going to do the rest. Yeah, mm -hmm. you just say what you need to say and you don't have to beat them over the head and keep, you know, nagging and nagging and jugging and jugging. Let God, somewhere when they get quiet, whether they have to be in jail, the hospital, uh, you know, somewhere that they are uncomfortable, God can play that back. And that's God get the glory. Some, what, plant some water, but God get the increase. But we want to do everything, mm -hmm. especially when it's our loved ones. You know, you feel for them. You want them to come out of this, you know, of, of, out of the sin, but mm -hmm. it, the way we doing it is not healthy. It's not healthy for us, not healthy for them. And a lot of times it drives, a, it, it, it creates a separation. Yeah. Yeah. So now you, mm -hmm. you can't even, sometimes they won't even want to talk to you. They got to block. You can't, now, you know, you, you have to pray mm -hmm. and you be, have to consistently pray. Cause I, that's with me too. I don't, I didn't consistently pray continue to keep them up whether we see them doing things or not because like uh job said he prayed pre-adventure they just had something in their heart you don't just you don't know mm -hmm. and you know we all got something in our heart but just pray mm -hmm. and sometimes we could hedge off some of them things that they gonna uh come into you know may have um 
come up on by friends mm -hmm. or other people mm -hmm. and now they dabbing in it whether it's drugs or you know mm -hmm. their sexuality and all this type of stuff we we having the wisdom having the holy ghost we'll, mm -hmm. we'll have that knowledge and have that and we only have to say it a lot of times say anything to them but you see mm -hmm. it and you tell the lord who to remove from out of their presence and 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 blind their eye and take you know and take the scales off their eyes to see these different things because sometimes when we do it it is 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 it don't uh it creates a you know um a you know just a, a wedge between you and them so yeah just have wisdom yeah you gotta have wisdom with your children and you know and like you said constantly pray maybe let me tell you something honey i know you do and i do i pray for my children yeah i don't just pray for my children i pray for their wives i pray for their they baby mamas i pray for it, they friends yeah you know I just ask God to keep them covered. Yeah. You know, and I, I constantly pray for them every single day yes. and night. You know, Jesus. and even sometime in the middle of the day, if one of them dropping my spirit, you know, if one of them dropping you know, the Lord showing me their face for whatever reason, I said, Lord, yes. I don't know what's going on. I don't know what, you know, you are omnipresent, you are omnipresent, you are omnipotent, you know all things. Yes. And I just begin to pray and say, you know, whatever's going on, you know. And, and it's just, you know, because, it, you know, a family and ministry is very important. And ministry to our family is very, very important, you know. And even your spouse, your, your husband, you know, I minister to my husband. Um, he ministered to me. You know, he ministered to me. He didn't realize it. But he ministered to me all of this week because, you know, me having to go back to work. And it's not, you know, a lot of people look at it as, oh, well, it's a dread for her to go back to work. You know, I know a lot of people was jealous that I was staying home. You know, because people yeah. make little comments and things like that. But God gave me a season of rest in that time. Amen. So now I'm back working full time. But I can say this about my husband. Um, when I was at work the other day, I called him for a second. You know, and one of the things I love how we minister to each other is the first thing my husband says when I'm on my way to work. He'll call me and he'll say, good morning. How are you doing? Mm. I say, I'm doing good. And then, you know, and I ask him, how are you doing? And then he said, well, I will just call and let you know I made the work safe. And I said, oh, I'm on my way to work. When I leave work, the first thing my husband says is he asked me, how was your day at work? He asked mm -hmm. me every single day. Yes. And so far, and, and then I asked him, and so far, we've had good days at work. <laughs> Praise God. <laughs> Praise God. But we minister to each to other. each because, other, yes. Because that's ministry. Because if I had something going on at work, he going to let me vent, get it out or whatever. And then mm -hmm. we're going to, you know, and then, or if he had. But what I'm saying, then after he asked me, how's my day? He'll say, is there anything you need me to do when I get home? Mm. He said, do you need me to clean anything? Do you need me to stop at the store and get something from the grocery store? Do you need me to start supper? The other night, he started dinner for me. When I came on Monday night, that's ministry. Yeah, when I is. get home, you know, if I go in there and cook, he'll go in there and wash the dishes. Yes. If I go, if he go in there and cook, I'll come behind him and wash the dishes. Amen. We're ministering back and forth to each other. And that's important to be in ministry, it not varies. just for your children, but for your spouse. Because if children was there, they see that. Or when children come over, but grandparents, grandchildren, they need to see uh, how a marriage is to put, you know, uh, is um, how marriage works, how right. marriage people love each other. And that because children pick up on when something ain't right and you ain't acting right or he's not, you know, being responsive to you or y'all hollering or or even just the looks uh, or no, not even not that. But y'all ain't, ain't even acknowledge each other, touch each other, walk right past each other, all kind of stuff. They notice that. And that's a lot of Thing that's another thing too. It when if children was young and that type mm -hmm. of attitude was going on, yes, they that that discouraged them from wanting to get married. So a lot of times now they don't know people from now know well, you know, they don't feel they gotta get married, it's just a piece of paper, or whatever the case. So because love haven't I mean marriage haven't been exemplified, but well, how right. it's supposed to be established, the union is supposed to be just as you was describing how you and your husband do. That's beautiful, and that's the way it should be, and that will that will you know flow overflow to our children but they haven't been seeing that right and when they're not right. in a loving home right. they feel that and that allows the enemy to come in and then he, he brings in all types of spirits 
So it, it begins at home, like you say. Yeah, it begins at home. Yes. It begins at home. It begins in your emotions. marriage. Yes. You know what I'm saying? Even if they, he's not their biological father, you know? Yes. Um, It doesn't matter because if even if your children, like if my sons, they've said it. They said, you know, even my oldest son, you know, him and Tommy had their moments. Right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but he, <laughs> but he said one thing about it, Mama. He said one thing I can say about him. He, we, I ain't never seen him disrespect you in no kind of way. See, he always showed his love for you. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> because me and Tommy, when we get in arguments and stuff, we didn't cuss each other out in front of them kids. You know, That's we didn't, right. we didn't do things like that. You know, in front of the children, and you know, and we we try to have our arguments when they weren't around, or we try to have our disagreements, and if we did, we tried to have our disagreement in a cordial way, that the children was not disturbed with me going and cutting up his clothes. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Although I did have a moment like that one time. Uh, yeah. Hey, I feel. I you. went in there one time. I ain't gonna lie. One time he made me so mad. I went in there cut up one of his one of his uh favorite shirts oh lord and listen <laughs> after i had cut the shirt up right uh -huh. <laughs> forgot i cut it up right uh -huh. it made about a month later we were having a good night we were just talking we was geeky ha ha together he ha and we were getting ready to go somewhere he pulled that shirt out <laughs> <laughs> yeah he pulled that shirt at the surprise, surprise. he's about what the world happened to my shirt i was like <laughs> <laughs> Girl, you oh, supposed to have got oh, rid of it once you I said, uh, cut it up. I said this romantic night for the turn it to Freddy Cougar now. Yes. Ooh. And you know what? I got real quiet. I was just looking at him. And I was like, and he talking about you crazy man. <laughs> <laughs> He said, you I said, well, I'm so sorry, honey. I did that a couple of weeks ago when you made me real mad. Right. I but said, thank I was God. So mad. I said, I promise I want to kill you that night. I literally want to kill you. I want to stab you. So yes. I had to just let that demon out. Oh, yes, yes. <laughs> so I said, I had, so I went there, cut his shirt up. Girl, that man had me fire her mad. I don't girl. even remember what we was arguing about. But girl, I was so fire hot mad. I went there and cut up that shirt. I was so mad at him. It was one of his favorite shirts. Oh. And so uh, he looked at me and he just shook his head. You know how Tommy always do. Right. He was smiling, time out. He's just crazy, <laughs> Trina. You yeah. crazy. He told me, I married somebody crazy. I said, yeah, you married somebody who was once crazy. I said, I'm redeemed by the blood, baby. Yeah. Because if it wasn't for that, you you have your hands full. But tell him the beast is still in there sleep, <laughs> but it ain't dead. So. <laughs> Don't wait. Let us let us sleep. <laughs> nah. <laughs> yes. Yes. Yes, Lord. Yes, thank you, Jesus. Thank yes. you, Jesus. I've I, I, listen, but I have grown and matured. You know yes. what I'm saying? Because baby, I was known for slashing ties and you net keying cars and everything else, baby. God but is thank good. Thank God. Thank God for Jesus. Yes. But yes. Anyway, so let's see well, how much time we got. Okay, we got a few more minutes. So so, um, and you know, one of the things I will also want to point out too in, in ministering to your family is, you know, you it's not just it's not just children, it ain't just husbands, it's the siblings, it's aunts, nieces, uncles, you know, everybody in the family. Absolutely. And so, you know, it's important for us just to continue on just you know, walking with the Lord, just Amen. walk with Christ. Amen. You know, is there anything else you want to share? Of some experiences that you've gone through or anything you want to share to help you know just give somebody some encouragement to you know continue on walking with christ especially when you have family members that's always looking for wrong in you yes yeah and you 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 hit it um you know early when you said it's not just uh spouses and children but it's everybody you know mm -hmm. and and not only like you know like our immediate family but work families and church family it's all communication and it's all loving and all having, you know, not esteeming yourself higher than others, not mm -hmm. because you already arrived or you're not doing something a certain way or you, you know, you feel that um, you mature in the air and they're not. And you want to, you know, we pride, pride get in the way and people can see that people can see when they going through their thing and you have a, this uh, a, a condescending tone. Mm -hmm. You don't supposed to be condescending with nobody. You don't put them down. You know, me, me, my daughter, we might talk about 
the family a little bit, laugh to ourselves. But if you are talking, you are in, you know, you in front of that person, or you menacing, you are in the midst of that person. You you got to show love. You got yeah. to show love. I don't care. We got some crazy ones. They do stuff. They 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 all everywhere. But <coughs> you know, we laugh about it later. But the truth is, we we're not exempt. Yeah, and anything can happen with us, and we can we can get on drugs. I mean, it can happen. So don't yeah. Yeah. don't be yeah. so hot. You know that you have arrived because we have it, and I'm thankful to God that I'm I am learning that because now I used to have I used to be like what in the world what's like I feel like I'm the black sheep like who is these people like what <laughs> what happened I'm thanking God for salvation but I was was and is you know I'm part of that family and I did some of the same things so yeah. I'm no better I'm yeah. definitely no better but yeah. I'm redeemed I'm mm -hmm. redeemed now and I'm going to continue <laughs> and so yes even when I mess up I need to go back because I I have had words and I had to go back and say, listen, I apologize for, you know what I'm saying? Don't, don't feel that you don't need to apologize to them because they not say they, they people, they're human and they flesh and you're trying to win them. So mm -hmm. you, you got to do the right thing all the time. And when, if you mess up because we will get it right, that's, let me just get mm -hmm. it right, right then. Hey, mm -hmm. I said that wrong. Or, you know, that was, that was wrong. Or I came up on you and I shouldn't have been so hasty and, whatever the case is. And I think people respect that. I respect that. Mm -hmm. You know, anybody should respect that, you know, yeah. and it can and turn around quicker than, mm -hmm. than years of some people never talk to their family no more or, mm -hmm. you know, and help holding grudges and unforgiveness. Unforgiveness will kill you. So will. It will kill you slowly. It is it, it, in your mind, your body, your soul, your spirit. So will. Yes. So, will. so you got to forgive so them, will. Ahead, move on. You might not be able to uh, kick it with them no more, but in your heart, you cannot be having replaying that stuff. You can't believe they mm -hmm. did this. I I never speak that. You let that stuff go, girl. Let, let me tell you something. You said something about that unforgiveness. Yeah. Do you not know that there that that um even it has been proven in in science? Yes, it has been proven in science that unforgiveness can take people out. Oh, absolutely. You know, and so and that's and, and you know, it, it, I, I'm I'm glad you brought that up. Yeah, because that's one of the biggest killers in family. It is is uh, is is some offense that was yes. taken. And you got family members ain't speaking. We got some of that going on in our family right now. Yeah. Um. And, um, you know, like my mama and my sisters and all that, we all, we all talk all the time. We get along, you know, you know, we don't have, we, you know, on my side of the family, you know, we, we understand that. Yeah. But, um, but unforgiveness will do that. And I've seen family members not come together in holidays and because the one of the, the wife might be acting up and the husband yeah. he's trying to please the wife. Right. Don't want to offend her because she don't like the family mm -hmm. you no know, and don't want to go around the family that's not ministry no you know and then what gets me is you know they they want to talk about jesus and god is on their side how god is jesus on your side if you causing division in a family mm -mm. you know and, and and like you said there are certain things you gotta let go you do yeah we might say things that that's part of being family if you're gonna say things you don't like sometimes Yes. Sometimes somebody in your family might say something to hurt your feelings or to offend you, but let it go. Let it go. Because I, I, I like you said, unforgiveness, the man, that unforgiveness, it'll take you out of here. It's a lot it'll of that cancer. Messing, what you said, it, 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 it's yeah, like it, it it affects your body because you're so mad. You know, internally, you you know, your, your pressure up, blood not flowing like it should, um, and you wonder why. Yeah, you wonder why so many people are dying in cancer and and all the type of ailments they got going on because of that can uh that unforgiveness like a it's like a slow death it's like a cancer mm -hmm. rotting your bones it will rot mm -hmm. you know you can imagine how you feel when you when you think about somebody that's done something towards you and you are unforgiving it is it's like you and, and you can relive it over and over and over, over. and over it happens, and, and it let it go years but you you mm -hmm. thinking about it or you just see that person and you get mad all over again you got to get that right you not get it right. them but it's for you. Mm -hmm. You gotta ask the Lord to take that, take that away from you because it should be not nothing that you can um that you you can't forgive nobody for. 
I, I right. said, but you but it might not be y'all might not be like you were one, once was just depending on what it was if it's that severe but forgiving that's like the bible said if it, if you even if they're your enemy you still be still be able to feed them that's you right know, do uh give them a drink of water you should never right. be because you you do you feed a stranger give a stranger some, some water so if it's a family member somebody you want had a relationship with and they did, you should at least be able to still get that. And you see them, it shouldn't be no, you you getting all tight and tense and, you know, ready to fight mm -hmm. even, you know, just from them being around, it's, there's something wrong. You got to give that to the Lord. There's something wrong with that. Exactly. Yeah, there's something wrong. You got to give it to the Lord. Because like I yes. said, ain't nobody in this world perfect. We all, sometimes we can offend somebody in our family. Mm -hmm. Yes. You know, and not knowing we offend them. And sometimes we can offend them and know we offend them. But then we sometimes can. it's vice versa. Right. But I have learned over the years to forgive it, forgive. Yes. Let me it too. go. Yes. Let that thing go. Another yes. thing, you want to let it go because everybody ain't promised tomorrow. No. And you don't want to be in a position where you're not speaking to your mother or your your, oh, your, no. sister, your brother. You're not speaking to your children. You know, whoever it is, you're not speaking to them. And mm. you know, and then and then, and then, and they taken away. Yeah. That, now you at the funeral hollering screaming. Yeah. Not only because they gone, but because how the, you the last thing you, they heard was you cussing them out or you telling them you hate them or whatever it is. Right. And now you can't even go back and tell them you love them. No. So it's so important to just tell. You know, I tell my children. My children tell me. My mom. I tell my family. We. I love you. We yes. Love you. Because that might be the last thing they hear out your mouth. That's right. Is they taken out of here or you taken out of here? Yes. So it's so important to Very. show them that love. I like when you said that. Yes. You know, but uh, unforgiveness, we gotta let we gotta let stuff go. Oh you no, know, yes. We, we we live in a fallen world, baby. And that's why the Bible tells us not to put it said, cursed is the man who puts his trust in man. Mm. Why? Because if you put all your heart and soul and trust in people, they will fail you. Yes, they will. You might be in a position where, you know, maybe, maybe, maybe your mama didn't show up when you need her to, or your husband, or your child, or whomever. Right. Your friend, whomever. They didn't show up when you need them to. And they probably had a legitimate excuse, but you're so angry and mad yes. because they did not show up. Because you listen, this is why we have to have a relationship with Christ. Amen. Because if you're going through a crisis, you can call on the name of Jesus. That's right. You don't have to call your mama. You don't have to call your daddy. No. You know, or call your sisters and brothers. Because what you going to do when they ain't around? Yeah, all right. If they gone. That's right. You going to carry on. You going so to be able to move carry on. on. And Jesus is going to be your mother. He going to be your father. Ooh. He going to be there to help you. He going to be there to help you. Yes. So, you and know, you keep that relationship with him first. Yes. And then everything else fall in fall line. in line. That's right. Mm -hmm. That's right. Because when you are so heartbroken, you will never forgive. And I never forget. And I know all that. <coughs> you, you something broken in you. You don't have the love like you're supposed to have. Go. You got to go back. Go back. You know, we're on the potter's wheel. Ask the Lord to take out these things that that allowing us to to be not to be not you know to not forgive and and not to um, show love. Because that's ultimately what our um, goal is. We got to look at what our, what our, what we was here for. What is our purpose mm -hmm. to be here? So and all that other stuff just is going to come as you mature and as you grow into Christ. So when you you find yourself short, you got to go back. That's the thing right now. While you breathe, and you can go and ask mm -hmm. for you know what you need. You don't have to act yeah. like you got it all together. If you need some more love, you need some more. You know, tenderness, you need some more uh, love and kindness and long suffering and all that. You need to t ask the Lord because these fruits should be in you and they should be abound if they're not right. lacking. And not God lacking. is the only one who can put that in there, not no <clears throat> husband, not no wife, not no children. But if they in there, you're going to be able to show that'll be what that's your um, uh, contribution to your family, the that's love. Right. The That's peace, the contribution. The joy. Amen. Yes, they Amen. see all that. Yes, and yep. nothing, and nothing that they done, cause you are gonna love them anyway. That's right. what I'm saying. It's mm -hmm. it's nothing good. Yeah, if they do good, praise the Lord. If they don't do good, praise the Lord. You got to know, I'm still gonna serve the Lord. Yeah. Whether what come what may. So, but love right. them children. Um, have the relationship. Get close to the Lord. So when people hurt you, cause they will. 
They will. They will, Apostle. I'm just. I'm, they yeah. will. I, I know. I know. <laughs> you can be able to move on. You can say, "Well, to God, uh, Amen." Yeah. To it's God all right. Glory. God and bless. Put, him. And, and that's what that's what prayer for. That's what prayer that's for. It. Bless. You. That's what bless them. Prayer, people understand. Prayer it, it help you, baby. Yes, it, it does. does. Oh, because God. if they say something to hurt you, mm -hmm. or you know whatever the case, like yes. you said, it's gonna happen. Yeah, my children said things to hurt. Me yes, you know what I'm saying. Uh, my husband had. I've learned yes. to go to God. I've learned to go to Jesus and just Jesus. pour my heart to Him. Uh -huh. and the first thing I said, "It's me, oh God, examine yes. me." Yes, examine me. What me. did they say? What did they say? Is it something in me that made them say it? You That's know? right. And God examined me. You know, help me deliver. Yes. Me. You know, you know, cast this stuff out of me. Don't let this stuff, this, this Be anger, this business sit in my heart. No. You know, no. and when you do that, when you do that, you will be, you're ministering to your family. Yes. They'll see the light of they Christ. They will see. That's right. I remember my bad boy cussed me one day, Tasha, like, you know I would kill him. You know I would kill him. I, I know him. My baby boy, Terrell, he, he, he was uh, on, on drugs at the time. Well, that marijuana, whatever it was. Mm -hmm. He came home with a jar of weed and he walked in my house. I said, I know you didn't walk in my house, but I just seen. So he went off cussing and I'm sitting at the dining room table, right? Mm -hmm. So I'm like, I'm going to go in the kitchen and get a knife. Mm -hmm. And I heard the spirit of the Lord say, that's not your son talking to you. That's right. He said, don't say a word. I said, God, did you hear what he's saying to me? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> he, he told me, he hated me, called me all kind of names, you know, and I didn't say nothing. And so he got, I said, Terrell, get your stuff and get out the house. But I tell you what, Josh, it was one day I think I was at church. I was in prayer. And that boy called me on the phone crying and, and, and apologizing to me. See? Because some lady that he saw, he prophesied to him. Mm. Some lady said, said your mama. Mm. You got to apologize to your mama. You know, God Hallelujah. spoke to him, you know. And he did. He called me. He call, called me on the phone crying said, Mama, I apologize. But see, what if I would have cut him that night? <laughs> you, I ain't no tell you know, what would know, happen, honey. I'm, the old yes. Katrina. <laughs> right. Terrell Christian will tell you. Yeah. The old Katrina. That boy would have been cut that night. Yes. <laughs> now, I, uh, yeah. I, I didn't play that back in the uh -huh. day. I was in the world, baby. You ain't talking to me in the kind of No. And in your house, you know. In and, my no, house, you too. So now I know without a shadow of doubt, listen to me tell you, evangelist, without a shadow of doubt, I know I got the Holy Ghost. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Because that night, when he did that, I would have acted the fool, but I, I listened to the Lord. I let the wisdom of God. Yes. And, and and guess what? Me and my baby, we close. You know what I'm saying? My son yes. did anything for me. You know what I'm saying? I do anything for him. But sometimes the enemy will try to come in. And he will. And you gotta use wisdom. But That's why the wisdom is so important. Yes. 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 Oh, thank you, Jesus. Because I showed said I looked, I, I said, God, did you hear what he said to me? Did you I, I, I don't know why I was asking God like he didn't know. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> I know. <laughs> cause, Cause the Lord had told you that don't don't go get that night. But so you wanna say, I mean, you heard what he said, like, yeah, I'm finna get some. He finna get out of here. I know that. But oh, no. thank God be the glory to God yeah. be that's what I'm talking about. And that's about, part Apostle. of ministry controlling it's, our anger. Yes. So you sometimes you gotta bite that tongue, man. You do, you, you gotta do. hold that thing, you gotta hold yes. that tongue, baby. Yes, <laughs> yes, it, and it will it will you will avoid a lot of trouble, a lot of more oh, heart. Yeah. It could have been a lot of more harder because you would have hit that boy, cut him, killed him. Could have killed him. Yeah, I could have killed you. But or he whatever. might have tried to start fighting me back. And that's right. Stand him in the chest or something. I don't know. That's right. So, so even though I'm that saying, hurt that you had, it, it was a little while. But look at the result. Look at the end. Yeah, yeah. You know, we have yeah. an end. The end result is is restoration. Is love. Is you know yeah. redemption. That we yeah. we're not. We we want to win souls. That's what our our goal is. We want to draw them. We don't want to draw. We don't want to push them away. So we want to draw them. them. Yeah, right. we want to draw them. So sometimes, yes, um, close your mouth when it's hard, when I know you because a, a child will talk in your house. <laughs> Come on, you, 
<laughs> you know how we do. Yeah, you know, you know and, that and, don't, and that don't sound house. right. Yeah, yeah but so, the Lord you said, know, you know what I'm saying? And so it, it that's the Holy true. Spirit. But I thank God for that. You know what I'm saying? Yes, I do too. Just yes. how to have that wisdom. Yes. You know, and self-control. And, and that control. Thank you, Jesus. And, 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 and in the midst of all that, the Lord did get the glory out of it. Mm, you know? Thank you. Jesus. So that's the things that we have to do. So I thank you for coming on. We had a real good conversation. Yeah, about I'm glad to be on. Yeah, and I really absolutely. believe, and I have you to come back on again. You know, this ain't gonna be the last time. Okay, I look like to come on and just be real, and just allow the spirit of the Lord just to use us to talk about everyday things. You know, absolutely, because so many people need that, and I really yes. believe that tonight's podcast is gonna be a blessing to whoever's listening. Amen. Because Amen. this thing go all over the world, baby. Thank you, Jesus. There's people in yes. Germany that's listening. You know what? You know what? The weirdest mm. place I saw? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Somebody in Ireland was listening to the podcast. Praise God. Yes. I said Ireland. Yes. But anyway, to, to God be the glory. To God be um, the glory. Yes. Because, you know, th this podcast is is, is nationwide. It, 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 Y'all can share this podcast. It ain't just going to be on Facebook. It's going to be on Spreaker. It's going to be on, on uh, Apple. It's on Amazon. You know, any platform you want that you listen to a podcast, yes, it's on now. Praise and so God. I thank God for that because we can speak to somebody. Somebody will need to hear this tonight. Yes. And the things that you spoke and the wisdom that you gave them. Yes. Thank you, so Jesus. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to just close out tonight. I would like for you just to close us out, um, Evangelist uh, Jones, uh, with a little prayer. And uh, again, thank you all for listening tonight mm -hmm. and listening to Raw and Prophetic. But before you close us out in prayer, uh, Evangelist, <clears throat> tell us how anybody can reach you or to contact you. Um, uh, I have a Facebook. This Latasha Jones is my um, uh -huh. is my name on Facebook. Um, and <clears throat> I guess the phone number, contact information on there. But other than that, I mean my. That's email fine. address if i mean you know i mean for us personal or i guess you can mess i have you know reach me through messenger, messenger on facebook mm -hmm. um our email address is is t1002201 at yahoo and basically that's just t as for tasha and october the 2nd 2001 is the number okay All yeah right. at on at yahoo.com amen amen Amen. Yeah, because you know, a lot of times we don't want to get our phone numbers out because you know, amen. So crazy. And anyway, we'll, you know, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, but amen. You, like you said, amen. all Facebook page, reach it through Messenger. You yes, know, somebody that might want to invite you to a family conference, you know, a conference that might want you to speak concerning family, women, in ministry, whatever it is. Mm -hmm. so, so I'm believing God for that. The doors will open for you. Amen. So, um, but again, I thank you so much for being a part of Raw and Prophetic. Um, and, um, you know, we just love you. And I thank you for coming on. you my sister in the Lord. And you my, um, you still my ride die. You know, you moved on me. <laughs> but you know, I get on that road. So I appreciate you. Yeah, we got to get on that road. Vincent. You got to come see me. I got to come see you. Absolutely. So, um, but anyway, thank you guys for listening to Raw and Prophetic where we are real, we are anointed, we are women, and we are prophetic. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to have Evangelist Jones close us out in prayer on tonight. Amen. Father, we thank you and we praise you. And we just thank you for this night. We thank you for the nuggets. We thank you for your uh, presence being amongst us, Lord God. We just invite you into every home, every platform that, yes, that this word is going out on, God, that it will fall on good ground, Lord, that the people will hear the word and not only hear it, but do what your word says to do God, your word, tell us how to live and how to act and how to, um, to present ourselves in every case, Lord God, we praying for families, Lord God, that they would have a uh, restoration, that marriages would be flourishing, Lord God, the children would be able to be obedient to their parents, that they would see the love in their homes. God, we just speaking mm -hmm. for any, uh, situations that has been estranged and or, uh, in children or mothers or Husbands, Lord God, we pray, Lord God, for the spirit of just restoration, God, that will flood, Lord God, this city, flood our country, Lord God, and so many people are hurting, Lord God, and separated and 
uh, and this place, Lord God, but you are everywhere, God, and you see hearts and you see minds and you see everything what's going on, things that have been said. We ask that you move on the hearts of those, Lord God, that have been angry, Lord God, and spoke against their mother, spoke against their father, spoke against their siblings, yes. Lord God. Thank you for touching their heart, touching, bringing their heart back to you that they would um, turn to you and ultimately turn towards their loved one, Lord God, because we all going through something, but we need each other. You made um, relationships for here on earth, Lord God, because when we get to heaven, all we're going to be is crying, holy, holy, holy. But here we need yes. each other, God. We need each other to show forth love and we need to be loving and loving kindness that you drew us that we will draw others. So we thank you for a possible, we thank you for the raw truth live, her um, podcast, God. We ask you to bless it, Lord God, abundantly, Lord God, her family, her husband, her children, Lord God. Thank you, Lord God, for her obedience, Lord, to even come on, Lord God, even through the tiredness, the weariness, the all just life situations. But God, for one thing we know, Lord God, what only what we do for you is going to last, Lord. So we thank you for yes. the obedience. We thank you for the the um, endurance to, to go forth, Lord God, and to continue to go forth. We ask you for to bless us, keep us, and make your face to shine upon us, Lord God, and be gracious to us, and give us peace in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Amen. 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 I Amen. thank you so much for being a part. Thank you. And, yes. Um, and so God bless you. Love you, sis. Bless you. Love thank you. God all bless. For tuning in yes. on Raw and Prophetic. Where we are real, we are anointed, we are women, and we're prophetic. God bless you. God bless you. All right.